All right, guys. So, ASI Air or Nina? Which is the best astrophotography software? All right, now, first things first. The reason that I'm doing this video is firstly, I've had no clear skies um, for weeks now, so I'm really struggling to get any imaging time in. Um, but the second reason, and the most important reason I'm doing this video, is that, you know, recently I've seen a few Facebook forums, especially uh, beginner forums. And, um, you know, one thing I've noticed is just people asking that sort of age old, typical question, I guess, of, you know, which is better? And it's obviously a question that people are going to ask when they're new to any hobby. But what sort of struck me about it, you know, I've been doing um, astrophotography now for a couple of years. And, um, you know, I use both tools. I use the Air sometimes. I use Nina. Like, predominantly, personally, I use Nina. But occasionally, I'll still use the ASI Air, although not very much these days. Um, but what struck me, the point is, um, is what struck me is how defensive people got in these two camps. So a person would come in asking a question about, um, you know, what's their advice and where should they go? And um, people would, there'd be a lot of real vitriol in the answers if somebody didn't like, um, you know, the, 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 other, the other camp, if you like. So there seemed to be like this real split between um, ASI Air champions, should we say, and and um, and the other side of the coin, which were, I guess, you might say, is people who are used or prefer PC based um, software, whether that be Nina, Sequence Generator Pro, Astrophotography tools. Um, so yeah, look, that kind of struck me because I thought to myself, look, as a beginner. I don't really think that's useful information and I don't think it's correct information either. So um, I thought I'd just do a quick video in this and just explain my personal reasons for why I don't think th there's a definitive answer for that. And also for why I don't think as a beginner, you should listen to those type of answers because they don't make sense to me. Um, first things first, I'll just say is that you know, astrophotography, just like any other hobby, has nuances to it. And, you know, there's subcategories as well of astrophotography. There's, you know, there's planetary astrophotography, there's solar, there's, um, you know, people who prefer you know, galaxies and, and, and deep sky astrophotography, nebula. So there's many sort of sub-branches within astrophotography. And anybody will tell you that's been doing astrophotography for a while that you often do end up just like, again, any other hobby, music, hiking, whatever it is, you, you end up with um, often multiple pieces of gear to suit those different um, subcategories of your hobby. Um, so I myself have a you know, couple of telescopes um, for different things. Sometimes I use camera lenses. So I'm not going to go into the technical details here or the, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time dwelling on the strengths and the weaknesses of the ASI Air, you know, and the strengths and weaknesses of, of Nina or, you know, any of the other PC sort of based tools. Um, I'm really just going to say, really what I want to say is in terms of advice and the advice that you should be looking for, um, when people when people are really answering those questions, what you need to look for is what are they asking about you? Because often these things get, come down to what type of, not just astrophotographer are you, but you know, how much, how much time do you have? How much, how familiar are you with technology in the first place? Are you a person that loves, t that loves gadgets? Maybe you love your PC, maybe you love tinkering. Um, you know, maybe that's your thing, or maybe you're from a background really where, you know, you want to, you want to pick up your ASI Air, you want to connect your telescope, you want to connect your camera, um, you want to, you know, connect your power up and you want to go. And, and that's your thing. Um, maybe you're really into portable astrophotography, so something small like this is, is ideal again. Um, and one thing to clear up is, 
in terms of the types of images or the quality of images that you're going to get, you can get very good quality images whether you're using an ASI Air or whether you're using Nina or any other software. So it's not it's not really about the quality of images. That's much more to do with the telescope that you're using and the camera that you're using and those kinds of things. So, you know, at a at a simplistic level, um, you know, the easy answer, I guess that the the easy answer for something like the air is if you're a person, maybe you're not a person who has a lot of experience with um computers maybe you don't have a good relationship with pcs and you know that kind of thing um, irritates you and you much prefer just to have something that's designed fit for purpose you plug everything into it and it goes and that even counts for people sometimes who um are very it and pc literate sometimes they also want a nice easy um quick um get up and go solution so for me, for example, if I want to just like quickly nip nip down, you know, an hour away to get some dark skies, or if I want to take something on a camping trip, I'm definitely taking something like the ASI Air because it's just going to be so easy and convenient. Um, but you know, Nina, Nina, sort of in contrast, it's extremely customizable. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do around. Um, advanced advanced sequences there's lots of different plugins made by third party companies um for for software like nina so it's constantly evolving and people are constantly making plugins for it so you know very broadly speaking i think you know that's probably where the the two camps sit but you'd also find that a lot of people into astrophotography probably do both as well. They probably have, just like me, they probably have an ASI Air for certain applications, and then they've got their their home-based PC solution that they may be predominantly used for their, for their home imaging, um, but not necessarily. So yeah, really the point of this video is um, I would recommend if you're new to the hobby and you're not sure which one of these solutions to go through, first do your own research. Um, and then, you know, if you are asking questions, whether it be on a sort of a, um, an astrophotography forum or a, a Facebook user group, look at those answers coming in because anybody that's telling you definitively this is better than that, I would say, broadly speaking, are probably not somebody that you want to be listening too much to. If they ask you first, okay, what type of astrophotography are you doing? Or, you know... How familiar are you with um, with PCs and setting up software? Is that something that you that, is that something that you enjoy? So they you know trying to find out more information about you before they necessarily recommend one of these solutions to begin with. I think probably they're the people that you want to be listening to. Um, so yeah, you know that's all I that's all I wanted to say really. Um, I really hope um, if you're stepping into the hobby and maybe you're a little bit overwhelmed by there's so much gear you know firstly there's the cameras and then there's the telescopes and then there's the mounts and then then there's the software and you're kind of not sure where to go maybe this will help a little bit at least in terms of you know what advice is it that you maybe should be listening a bit more to and um you know who should you trust a bit more because there is so much information out there so look I hope you guys I hope you guys get some clear skies. I hope you're getting many more clear skies than me because I've been waiting a long time <laughs> for clear skies. And um yeah, good luck on your astrophotography adventures and I will see you next time on the channel. Cheers guys. Mm -hmm.